Japanese, rice, fish. In winter. Well, actually, breeding in winter. Here is an update on my Medaka Ember Lame Lemi Lame. Well, it refers to those sparkly little scales. So, uh, Medaka Ember with sparkles. In stark contrast to vampires, being sparkly makes a fish awesome, in my personal opinion at least. I got these late in 2019 and um, in the beginning of October I started to prepare a tank for them for the winter. Some pennywort taken from their outside patio pond, I think is the term the cool kids use these days, and also some hornwort which is said to be a very hardy plant and it's kind of fitting to these um, medaka rice fish, they are also quite hardy. Turns out Hornwort isn't all that resilient towards uh, rapid water parameter changes, so uh, that's a failure. Uh, in mid of October I added some snails and they um, crawled along quite nicely. A few of them actually carried eggs on their shell. Shortly after I added the first few medaka. And uh, I must admit shortly after that I added a whole bunch of them because um, I kind of just ran out of patience, uh, sorry. Normally it should cycle longer, but I used some um, old um, materials in forming this aquarium, so. A second batch of hornwort dropped leaves as well. The old one did regenerate a bit, uh, but uh, screw this, I'm changing over to pennywort entirely. After an earlier water change, all my ram's horn snails uh, sadly died. Apparently there are still copper in my tap water, so I added a water purifier. And now it's fine, and I also added some bladder snails, and they're doing just fine. And you might have noticed there's something on the behind of these little fish. And it's eggs. Yes, yes, the first eggs and the bladder snails uh, laid eggs as well. But... What's this male doing here? Can you see it? It's carrying something around. And it should not do this. Bad, bad fish. You see, there's an egg hanging from its mouth. Bad fish, bad, bad fish. <laughs> but you gotta love this derpy look on its face. Uh -huh. I did not see it eat the egg, however, entirely, but I better prepare a bowl for separate egg raising. At this point in time, the following happens on a daily basis. The light switches on early in the morning and shortly after I serve breakfast for the little ones. And you can see they um, have a good appetite. After that they uh, uh, get in the mood, shall we say. The dominant male starts to chase around the other males and um, of course also the females and starts to um, try to impress the female in order to mate. But unfortunately I could not record a successful mating. I only saw some matings that did not produce eggs. And here you can see a male that's courting a female uh, which uh, already is carrying eggs. Which seems a little bit weird to me, but hey, each its own. Ah, I think now he's found a female which does not already have eggs. Way to go. And uh, this one is already having eggs. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on here. But uh, as long as they are eggs, I'm happy. And this little courtship displays um, are happening every morning, basically. They are very busy little fish. Yes, yes.
The pennywort is starting to arrange its leaves according to the light source and it's all starting to look uh, quite okay or maybe even slightly good-ish. And of course many many eggs on this little uh, fish butt. And I am right now trying to harvest them. How do I do that? I fashioned some sort of spawning mob from my trusty old sponge cloth. And uh, let's try it out. Maybe they will accept it and deposit the eggs there. They are um, observing it, but I think this is a failure again. No, not really all that interested. So what I did then is I prepared a separate box with only this artificial spawning substrate. That did not work as well. But what I found out is that the eggs come off relatively easy and they are just sticking in the net, which I used to catch the adult. And uh, later I found an already somewhat developed egg in the aquarium. So um, apparently they did not all get eaten. Here then I have a separate bowl, um, actually made in Japan, and I added some pennywort and of course the eggs, and you can see they stick nicely to the roots. Those fresh eggs can hardly be seen on the bottom of this bowl, so uh, let's have a closer look. Uh, still not all that good to see, so let's have an even closer look. Yeah, yeah. We can actually follow the development a little bit. Um, the yolk gets smaller, the embryo gets bigger, and that's already quite big. And soon we should be able to see a little heartbeat. Um, maybe here, right, right, on the left, and on the right. If you look closely, there's some heartbeating going on. Meanwhile, in the aquarium, there are also some eggs developing. Nice! But let's follow the embryonic development a little bit more. And those stuff around the egg is not all just dirt and algae, it's also the uh, sticky filaments that uh, these Medaka ricefish eggs have. And meanwhile, this male also uh, had a little uh, egg in the mouth. Bad fish! And going on and um, developing, developing, nice to see. And now it's only to play the waiting game. Ah, oh, man, this takes forever. Ah, there's the first lava, the first fry of the Medaka ricefish in the F1 generation. It took quite a while for the first free swimming lava to appear. I guess something went wrong with the first batch of eggs. But uh, on the plus side, this um, left ample time for the development of some microfauna, including copepods and ostracods and um, ciliates probably also I saw, some small little worms which I did not identify yet. So there's plenty of good starter food around and uh, they are not really all that dependent on this uh, baby fish food I added. Looks like I will be able to start the outside season with more fish than I started last year.